Hi folks and welcome to my first impressions video and initial thoughts on a top-down shooter called Hybrid Wars, developed by Extreme Developers, published by Wargaming Labs. It's currently on sale at the time of recording this on Steam for £13.59, that's for the basic package and there are some extra packages on there with various other add-on bits and season passes which we'll talk about a bit later on. So what exactly is Hybrid Wars? Well, as you can see, it's a top-down shooter. You basically play a super soldier, tasked with running across levels, shooting down wave upon wave of enemy soldiers and mechs and droids and vehicles, and also being tasked with a few objectives to complete along the way. It's a very simple sort of game, like the type we used to see back on consoles and even in the arcades back in the 90s. And I guess that is the market that this is aimed at, people looking for that nostalgic type of shooting game. Now, as you can see, the gameplay is fairly simple, running up, down, left and right, shooting everything that moves, more or less. You also destroy a lot of the landscape, some of the buildings of which reveal power-ups or extra ammunition for the weapons. And you can also jump, you have a jetpack on. At least you can jump some of the time. You're seeing me playing as the soldier in here. Scattered about the levels are various mechanical aids that you can jump into. Things like big robotic mech suits, which that's what you start off with. And then later on you'll find things like tanks and helicopters and various tougher mechs that you can jump into and control as well. Now the mechs can certainly jump up and down but obviously the tanks can't, and the helicopters you get, well, they can just fly over all the scenery anyway. And intelligent use of these mechs and vehicles is going to be key to completing each level. Now, there is a bit of a, a plot to the game, but I wouldn't pay too much attention to that. I couldn't quite get the gist of it. Basically involves running around shooting things whenever you're told to, and also activating various objectives on the level. These might include rescuing civilians, escorting somebody out of a prison, or blowing up a factory. Now you progress, obviously by completing levels, shooting stuff and gaining experience for such, which allows you to unlock new abilities on your character. And speaking of characters, in the version I have there are three to choose from. This is one of the special editions. They all have a different graphic, they all have a different primary weapon, although they do feel quite similar in actual use. They do have different secondary weapons however, and secondary weapons are important because on the initial soldier they are limited in ammunition quantity, your primary weapon isn't, you've got unlimited ammo for that so you can just blast away. And of course each of these characters can be levelled up separately in the campaign mode. And the new abilities do make them a bit tougher, but not only that, you can also level up the abilities in the mechs and the vehicles as you come across them. Doing damage earns you points and experience in those particular vehicles and or mechs, and at the end of the level you can level up and buy new upgrades. This is quite important because the mechs and vehicles don't have unlimited ammunition unlike your character even in the primary weapon, that is quite limited. Some of them have chain guns, machine guns, that seems the most common type. And secondary weapons range from homing missiles to deployed anti-aircraft turrets. So levelling up both your character and the mechs does add an interesting element to the game, and it keeps things fresh, keeps things progressing, gives you something new to work towards. Also, there's a co-op multiplayer mode, although currently this seems a little bit basic, there's no way to chat to other players, but if you do have friends that want to play, you can jump in and play with them. For those who don't have friends, well don't worry, there is a quick game mode and if you choose that then it will try and pair you up with some other players from around the world and you can jump in and play together. The multiplayer mode doesn't seem to look any different to the single player story mode for each mission. There's the same amount of mechs and vehicles scattered about that you would find in single player mode and it appears to be the same amount of enemies as well. Although bear in mind the game has just been released so these details may be patched and changed in the near future. A couple of other things to note is that the game does support gamepad, so you don't just have to play it with a mouse and keyboard. In fact, I personally think playing with a gamepad would be preferable on this. I think it would be easier. People refer to these as twin stick shooters. Well, I think that would be an easier method of control than possibly using the mouse and keyboard, although that's what I've been using. And it did work okay, but it was a bit fiddly to get used to. And one problem I do have with the game is that the controls aren't remappable. You are set with two options for predefined controls. You've got the basically W, A, S and D, which you tend to see in every PC game. And also another strange one, which I've never seen and isn't even particularly suitable for left-handers. So I'm a bit disappointed that you couldn't remap the controls. That was the, the, the big thing for me. But kudos to the game for giving gamepad support in there, because if you do have one line around, that's going to be the better way to play this. 
And while we're on the subject of settings, the graphics settings aren't very definable either. You've got a choice of high or low and a few resolution choices, but there isn't much to fiddle with in there and tinker with to try and get the best performance out of your system. That said, I run this on a pretty powerful system and I didn't have any trouble with frame rates, apart from when my characters would level up in the middle of a mission. And then things very briefly slowed down, but that might be a little game bug that's probably going to be ironed out in the first patch, so keep an eye out for that, but it's nothing that detracts from the gameplay really. Now, although you see at the start I was running around as a soldier, most of your time is actually going to be spent playing in mechs and vehicles, and for a very good reason. Basically, as a soldier, you have a health bar, which, after you unlock for the first ability, you do get a little private drone which follows around healing you. That's actually very useful. But once the health's gone, you're dead. You have three lives per level, and if you lose them all, you have to repeat that level from the start. Now, jumping into a vehicle or a mech, well, that vehicle or mech has its own health bar, and if that runs out, you basically just jump out as it gets destroyed with no other penalty. So it's definitely worth having as it basically doubles your health. I would say that jumping into a mech or vehicle has lots of other benefits too, but that isn't instantly obvious when you start playing the game, as the very first mech that you get into, the Hunter, is, I feel, particularly weak because you've been running around as a soldier with decent mobility and unlimited ammunition from your main gun, and all of a sudden you jump into a mech which doesn't feel quite as mobile perhaps, maybe that's just me, maybe it's just my impression, but it didn't feel quite as mobile, and you have limited ammunition in the gun, which is a problem, although generally you can find more before you run out as long as you don't waste it. But the mech itself feels rather weak, and I felt like it got destroyed far too easily. And I was a little bit disappointed by that, until I got into the, some of the later things. The tank in particular that you pick up later on is tough as old nails. There's two different tanks that I've played so far, and they are both very good. Obviously, you lose the ability to jump around, but you can drive over anything. Just ramming into things does enough damage. So the tanks definitely get my thumbs up. Now there are other mechs that you can play later on as you unlock them going through the levels. And I found the second one to be a lot better than the first, which again was a big relief. Now other vehicle wise, there are two helicopter type vehicles that I have tried. First one takes uh, a lot of controlling. It feels quite weird. If you played the tank, that doesn't get controlled in quite the same way. And it's just a little thing to get used to, but it does throw you off a little bit at first. Helicopter can, of course, fly over any sort of terrain that is otherwise impassable on foot. Basically, all these things tend to feel the same in the way they play. They have some rapid firing main gun and usually some sort of rocket launcher or missile launcher as the secondary. The second airborne vehicle that I picked up was a strange one as it got stealth capabilities. I'm not sure if that was just particular to the one level that I found it on, but it basically allowed you to fly over the entire map without aggroing any of the enemies and complete the objectives when you got there. I'm not too sure about that, but <laughs> anyway, that's what it did, and it was certainly interesting. The other vehicles, however, they all feel much of a muchness. The weapons don't really feel that different and exciting. The tank is my personal favourite, as it seems to be as tough as old nails and just survives a lot better. As to the mechs, they're an interesting idea, but I feel like the developers could have made a lot more of them. Different weapon systems, different abilities, different mobilities. As it is, they don't feel particularly dangerous or exciting to play. Now, you've probably seen enough of the footage going in the background, so let's have a bit of a summing up with some pros and cons. The good side of the game, as I've mentioned, gamepad support, I think that's a good thing to add. Also, the game is relatively inexpensive to get into, and I mentioned at the start that there are other packages available on Steam. These come with things like extra characters. Well, you don't have to buy any of these extra characters. In fact, the game probably feels very samey-samey no matter which character you play. Although they do have different abilities, you will spend the majority of your time playing in mechs and vehicles, so you can stay alive longer. So the character's unique abilities and weapons don't really play a huge part in it, at least I feel and therefore you might not feel the need to buy any extra packages as the game progresses and releases them. For me, the thing that kept me playing as long as I did was the lure of finding the new mech, seeing what new abilities I would get, what new vehicles would become available, and seeing whether there'd be some new interesting and devastating super weapon attached to one of them. And as to the game's visuals and audio, well, the sound and graphics look quite nice enough to me. It does look a bit dated, but I think it's going for that retro sort of look, and to be honest, sound and graphics aren't the be-all and end-all of a game. It's always in the gameplay. And unfortunately, that's where this one might just fall down a little bit, because all the levels, to me, seem pretty similar. The gameplay, it kind of feels like once you've played one or two levels, 
that's all you're going to get throughout the rest of the game. It's just run around, jump around, shoot a load of enemies, get to the other side of the map. The levels also seem pretty linear, which is a bit of a disappointment. There's one or two open levels at the start, some city blocks where you can pretty much go wherever you want. However, they do feel like you're just trekking from one side of the city to complete an objective, only to trek all the way back to repeat the second one, to then repeat that trek and go back to the other side to do the third. The other sort of levels you get are very linear levels where you'll be going through canyons and gulches and things like that and you are basically hemmed in on the side so it's it, it's this way or no way type of level. Also walking around can feel a little bit slow especially if you backtrack across the map all the time and I found jumping around a little bit awkward because of the way the screen is laid out. If you're on the side of a building or something you need to jump over it you can't always quite see your character and trying to jump around it, it's not just like a simple jump, it's like an extended jump and it does sometimes feel a little bit cumbersome. We've already talked about the lack of mappable controls and the basic video card settings. They're not too bad, I don't mind those too much. I've managed to get on with what was available in the game. One of the things that I did have a bit of trouble with was that sometimes the enemy will be off the edge of the screen shooting at you and you just can't target them. This is particularly annoying if you're in some sort of boss fight or in some area where there's a lot of enemies on the screen at the same time and the thing that's doing the most damage to you is just off the edge. Because of the way that your character's targeting system works, if your cursor is not right over that target, the guns and missiles you're firing won't hit it because they don't just carry on in a straight line they tend to fire in an arc and that is kind of annoying but it is something that the developers could fix I'm pretty sure. Other than that the only other negative I can think of is that there's a lack of chat in multiplayer and that, that should really be in. Now a lot of the negatives are listed here are things that can be quite easily fixed I feel in future patches such as the remappable controls, the graphic settings, the multiplayer chat. That could all be put right so if you're on the fence about buying this just keep an eye on the developer's website and see how they respond to things and see how they develop future patches. All in all, is it a game I'm going to continue playing? Well, now that I feel like I've got all the mechs that I'm likely to find, probably not. That was the law that kept me playing. I think for me the gameplay is just a bit too repetitive. All the missions, you can, you can more or less forget the blurb and the story behind each one and just run around on the screen where the arrows tell you to, to complete the objectives because all you do each time is just shoot whatever you see enemy-wise, get to the objectives, blow up whatever it happens to be, run back killing more enemy and repeat. Although they do get harder, the levels do get harder as you go on and some do require a bit more thought rather than just go rushing in. So for me personally I don't feel like this has a lot of long term interest but for the price that you would have to pay to get this game I think you would probably get your money's worth out of it if, if you like the look of the gameplay that you've seen on the video and if you're up for something that's a little bit nostalgic and old school. Anyway folks hope you found this video interesting and enjoyed it. If you did please do let me know underneath and if you've bought Hybrid Wars already let me know what you think about it. Anyway thanks very much for watching and as always I'll catch you next time.